prophets of God, we walk shalom. This is Apostle Redress coming here, beautiful to my beautiful studio here, because the Lord God is, he reigns, and he reigns for to God be all the glory for the things he has done. He's done great things for us, and we are exceedingly glad. We give God praise for you all who are taking time out of your busy schedule to bless us with your presence or texting, you know, uh, <laughs> to hear what this earth and us have to say on a Sunday afternoon. Amen. We bless God today for the day that he has made. We're going to continue on to rejoice and be glad in it. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. And we declare that from the high tops of the valley of the where wherever you are in your spiritual walk right now we want to declare that jesus is lord and lord over all nobody else deserves the glory but him and for that we want to thank him for giving us this opportunity that we do not take for granted that we know that it is all about him and not about us we salute every apostle every prophet every evangelist amen every uh a uh, 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 pastor teacher bishop First Lady, amen, uh, uh, Minister of Music, Youth Pastors, we salute you all right now in the name and the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. We salute every uh, 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 intercessor, amen, that's holding us up while we are praying, while we are laboring. We thank you for praying for us, for we realize it is the strength of the prayers of the righteous that availeth much, and we want to give him all that is due this morning, today, Whatever it is, whatever time it is for you right now, we know that you, God, is doing something great in the lives of God's people. And so we do not want to take nothing for granted. We want to continue on to love on him like never before because it's all about him and not about us. So before we do anything else, can we please go to God in prayer? Because without prayer, guess what? We really can't do too much. <laughs> without prayer, uh, it's meaningless to even join, come in and join together. But we know that there is power in prayer and there's power in agreement. And so, God, we thank you today and we bless you. We honor you for being who you are for us. We honor you because you are our God. You are our Savior, our soon coming King. And for that, oh God, we want to bless your holy and high name, oh God, on today. We thank you, Lord God, for rescuing us even from ourselves. We bless you, oh God, today for letting us know, Lord God, that we are in the right place at the right time to receive a right blessing from you and you alone. We bless your name today for, Lord God, keeping my watch all over our lives right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless your holy name for washing away our sins, though there are many before you, the sins of omission and commission, knowing, Lord God, it is you, Lord God, who knows how, Lord God, to cleanse us whiter than snow with your precious blood, and we could present our bodies as living sacrifices unto you, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. And so, God, we ask you to receive our worship, our praise, our adoration, our honor unto you and you alone. We do not, Lord God, share your glory with any one, but we, Lord God, we give it all back unto you and you alone. We thank you for, Lord God, changing, Lord God, the course of, oh God, what the enemy meant, Lord God, for evil. You will turn it around for our good. We bless your name, Lord God, for this day that you have made it, and we're going to continue on to rejoice and be glad in it. We, Lord God, celebrate you and you alone. Celebrate your faithfulness and you alone. Celebrate your patience and you alone. Celebrate, Lord God, your grace and your mercy for you you alone are worthy of all of our praise. And so, God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you for tenderizing our hearts to hear what thus saith the Lord, oh God, on today. We thank you, Lord God, for still speaking, oh God, in the atmosphere, speaking to your apostles and to your prophets. We give you honor. We do you pray, Lord God, for your word that, Lord God, makes sense to our spirit man. We thank you, Lord God, and we bless you. We honor you and we praise you. are known as a friendship that, Lord God, teaching, oh God, is what us preaching will be made easy, oh God, in this moment right now. We thank you and we bless you. We honor and we praise you. It's in your name that we pray. Your name is Jesus and forever and ever. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless word. 
Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Ooh, who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Yeah, God. Matchless king and beauty when this world. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Because your presence is heaven to me. Yes. Your presence is heaven to me. That's why I can't say your name, oh, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, your presence is heaven to me, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Your presence is heaven to me. There's no other God like our God. And I want to let somebody know that today because people must understand when you are in a place where when you have no one else to depend on but God, because God created it that way. God orchestrated it that way. You can just look to the right, look to the left. You could call uh, whoever you want to call, uh, but they're not going to answer. But guess what? You can tell the Lord, who is like you, Lord, in all the earth. Matchless love and beauty and this world. Yes, God. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Because your presence is heaven to me. Nothing like your presence, oh Lord. Your presence is heaven to me. And so God, we thank you right now. That your presence is all over for you are omnipresent. We, Lord God, ask you, Lord God, to go visit Africa. Go visit uh, um, uh, Asia. Go visit, oh God, North America, South America. Go visit, oh God, those who are in need of your presence right now. We pray that you shall, oh God, let your presence be made known in their lives. Those who are in incarcerated. Those, oh God, who are, oh my, uh, in, 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 in the hospitals, in the nursing homes right now. We pray that you shall, oh God, orchestrate your presence in their their lives. We thank you in advance. Those are God who are homeless. Those are God who are in trouble. Those who don't know what to do. Present your presence to them. Oh God, reveal yourself to them, oh God, that only you know how to do. We pray, Lord God, for every apostle, every pastor, every prophet, every evangelist, every teacher, every bishop, every first lady. We ask you, Lord God, to give them strength where they are weak and let them continue on to walk up that we call life. We thank you in advance, Holy Spirit. We ask you, God, to breathe your walk unto them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, for the peace of Israel. We thank you, Lord God, for your prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. We bless your name, oh God, today that we're going to keep looking to the hills because that is where, Lord God, our help is coming from. We're going to look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We bless you and we honor you for being who you are for us. We give you praise. We give you honor for keeping
bring us when we could not keep ourselves. We ask you, Lord God, to continue on, Lord God, to minister unto us, that we would, Lord God, forget, uh, backslid. We would not, Lord God, forget, Lord God, the promises, Lord God, in the middle of the process. We bless you and we thank you for, Lord God, giving, Lord God, the strength. We pray for everyone who, oh God, is doing uh, something that is uh, great right now in the eyes of you. We thank you and we bless you. We honor you for, Lord God, orchestrating your power, orchestrating your grace and your mercy. Oh, God, in the midst, oh, God, of everything, we thank you in advance. We bless you in advance. We ask all these many more blessings. It's in your name that we pray. Your name is Jesus forever and ever. Amen and amen. I'm going to have to charge my phone, my, 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 my charger real quick, see? <laughs> Before it goes out on us, we do not want to not fulfill our assignment. Amen. We thank God today. We thank God today. We thank God today. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We ask, Lord God, we ask right now for those who are coming on board to please share. Amen. Sharing is caring. Amen. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Please share this broadcast on today uh, because uh, somebody needs to know that in spite of what life brought, what life have brought this year, uh, even though we are, we have a spirit of regret uh, that's roaming around, but we know that God is going to change that regret into my, my, my recovery, re restoration, re uh, uh, removal right now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles with me, with you, I pray that you can turn your Bibles to the first book of the Bible. Amen. The first book of the Bible, of course, we know it is Genesis. Um, and we know that Moses was the one, of course, who uh, uh, handwritten this. Uh, through the dictation of the Holy Spirit, through the dictation of God himself. Moses was not born yet. He was born in what we know as the book of Exodus. So, of course, he was just listening to what God was saying, and he was writing things down. Now, Moses wrote five books, four, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, five books, what we call the Pentecost. And in that, we see the great, um, especially in the book of Genesis, it shows us clearly uh, the beginnings of beginnings. Um, all that we know today is of the beginnings. Um, so there's nothing, as Solomon says, nothing new under the sun. And so when we see that, we must know that he is uh, showing us some things. Um, nothing surprises the earth. Nothing surprises God. <laughs> nothing surprises the sun. <laughs> and so we're going to see some beautiful things in this wonderful book that let us know that um, uh, the people that came before us on earth, they suffered regret. They suffered hardship, but they knew there was a promise that was lingering in their in their lives. And so I want to talk to those today who who think that it is not, it's um it's hopeless uh, to keep on hoping <laughs> i want to talk to those people today about the holy spirit I want to talk to th that person today that that feels that 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 it's not going to work it's not going to uh, come to fruition what god had promised and so i want to let you know today uh and it's not just me that's going to tell you this but we're going to study uh genesis chapter 2 starting in chapter 25 jacob Amen. I want to talk to us today about um, being regretful, uh, uh, being uh, 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 mm, uh, having this regret spirit uh, for for almost twenty years. <laughs> uh, twenty years, uh, and we should know the story. But it's good to rehash because, as a teacher, you never know who is coming on board and hearing this story for the very first time. I do not want to be oblivious to think that everyone knows the story. Now, we should know that um, uh, Abraham, of course, uh, God took him out of his country, Earth, and um, uh, he says, I need you to 
uh, uh, start a new lineage and get away from the idols and because um, I want you to start something fresh. God wants somebody to start something fresh and not a new religion, forgive me, God forbid. But we were talking about something fresh, a fresh move of God. And so here he is, uh, Abraham, of course, uh, he started, and of course, um, him and his wife and Lot. And we know the story about him and Lot. Uh, the Bible said that the earth was too, uh, 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 their wealth was, the earth could not hold their wealth. <laughs> Can you imagine that? The Bible says this in saints. And so Abraham said, let's go left, you go wherever, you, if you go right, I'm going to go left, and so on and so forth. And so we see it here that Abraham, uh, what, what God had promised Abraham, it came to fruition 22 years later. And of course, Isaac was born. Laughter was born. Laughter was born. Uh, in his old age, her, her uh, 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 Sarah's old age, laughter was born. And she laughed. She sure did. And so Isaac, um, out of the three patriarchs, Isaac is the shortest story in Genesis. Uh, I'm just giving you a highlight of, of who a uh, uh, great-grandfather was, which was Abraham, who started the, the, uh, this lineage. And here comes Isaac, and uh, prior uh, to uh, Abraham's death, uh, um, uh, Abraham told um, his servant to go to his country, Canaan, and to please, I'm sorry, um, went to his country, in, because he did not want to, uh, um, Isaac to marry the Canaanites uh, in his country, in, in where he was dwelling. And so he went and he found, he saw this beautiful young girl. Uh, and so here she is, uh, 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 she now is, uh, 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 Rebecca was, was, was she, he, she uh, encountered this, uh, uh, the, the, the the maid, I'm sorry, uh, the Abraham's servant. And in that, they found out that uh, Rebecca was Abraham's great niece. Mm. And so they brought, he brought a, uh, Rebecca back to Abraham. And the minute Isaac saw, <laughs> Isaac saw Rebecca, he fell in love. Uh, the Bible does say that it was after um, he lost his mother. Uh, two years later, he, just, he he had to get married. So Jake, so actually Isaac got married at age of 40. Uh-huh. Uh, so I don't know why people think that people, young men have to get married so young. <laughs> That's not true. But anyway, we're not talking about marriage today. <laughs> and so we're seeing here that, that um, uh, uh, unfortunately, just as Sarah uh, uh, was barren, Rebecca was barren, and 20 years of marriage, 20 years of marriage, saints. Here, uh, the Bible says clearly that he prayed for his wife. And we're in Genesis chapter 25 right now. Uh, he prayed. The, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. Now, when Isaac prayed with the, pleaded with the Lord for his wife because, uh, because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea. And Rebecca, my, my, his wife conceived. Isn't it a good thing for you to have a mate that knows how to pray, that knows how to reach heaven, that knows exactly what's going on? Uh, and so uh, uh, he prayed and she got pregnant. Not just with one. I tell you, God will give you double for your trouble, won't he? Uh, so she was pregnant with twins. Uh, this is the first time we're, we're hearing a uh, uh, recording of twins uh, in the Bible. Uh, um, uh, theologian says that um, mm, um, Cain and Abel were twins, but we're not 100% sure. But this here, um, we see in here clearly that uh, um, it's written that, um, that Rebecca was, 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 uh, um, was pregnant with twins. And in that, she was restless. And so we see here, um, verses 29 through 34, we're seeing here now the birth of Esau, which, of, uh, um, which of course, he was a hairy, uh, red, hairy young man, baby. And, of course, in the heel of Esau, here comes Jacob. Jacob uh, means trickster. And so we're seeing here that growing up, and as they're growing up, they, 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 they begin to be very fond of one another. In verse 20, chapter 26, it shows us clearly that, um, uh, that there was a famine um, 
and because there was a famine, so guess what? Um, uh, 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 so uh, uh, he, uh, uh, Isaac, uh, took his um, his wife and his children um, to another land, and of course, it was in Abel Abimelech where this has happened. And so we're seeing here Abimelech, uh, the, the 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 prince, uh, uh, the king, saw Rebecca and said, "Wow, she's beautiful." And like father, like son, he said, that's not my wife, that's my sister. And so Abimelech took her, but even when Abimelech took Rebecca, God still had his hand on that, this family. No matter what lie we conjure up, no matter how disobedient we are, the hand of God will always be only because God ordained it to be so. I want to let someone know today that no matter what you're facing in life, no matter how disappointing it is, the hand of God is still resting upon you. So we're seeing here that um, when, when, when Abimelech saw uh, Jacob, I'm sorry, Isaac and Rebecca um, making out, having a good time embracing each other's love. And Emma, uh, Abimelech said, um, I thought you told me that was your sister. You don't, you, we don't do that to, your, to our sister. <laughs> we don't do that kind of action <laughs> with our sister. And so he says, oh, I was just afraid. And so they made a pact because, they, of course, they knew each other for, for, since, since um, his father, um, his father's day. And so, so, so there'll be no kind of misunderstanding. Here comes uh, a, a, a pact with, with, with them saying that we're not going to try to destroy one another. So that's exactly what had happened. So now we're seeing that now they went on. They kept going. And so here comes uh, Isaac is now getting old. And unfortunately, he cannot see too well. Uh, what we call legally blind, I guess, today. He couldn't see, but he knew. Uh, you have to understand that Isaac, he was a house guy. And I'm sorry, not Isaac. I'm sorry, we're talking about Jacob. Jacob was he, he stayed in a house with his mom. That's why Rebecca loved him. And of course, Esau was a hunter. And that's why Isaac loved Esau. When he knew that it was time for the, the blessing to be transferred to, um, to his boys, the mother conjure up. But it's nothing that she really conjured up. And let me make this clear, saints. Let's go back to ver chapter 25. In verse 23, chapter 25, Genesis chapter 25, verse 23 says, And the Lord said to her, Two nations um, are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So God already told Rebecca, the younger one that's going to come out last is going to be stronger than the one that came out first. That's letting us understand something that um, mm, uh, the, the, Jesus says that the, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So we're seeing that God Jesus is just you know, in, 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 uh, making it clear exactly what is going on when it comes down to that. So we're seeing here that she 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 saw that her husband is about to uh, uh, go. Don't know when, but it's better for him to uh, uh, transfer the blessing right now before he um, dies and not do it. And it, of course, it's the custom for um, for them to always have the older son gain the blessing. So now we're seeing here that it happened like that, and we now in a place where uh, Rebecca said to Isaac, "Listen, no," said, said to Jacob, "Jacob, uh, I'm going to have to make the stew because I'm the one who taught Esau how to cook it." <laughs> uh, and here he is uh, about to go forward in um, knowing what needs to be done. Hmm. So he said, how can this happen? I, I, I don't know how to, to trick my dad. 
I don't know how to trick my dad, mom. I don't, I don't know how to uh, uh, lie to my dad. How am I going to act like Esau where I don't look like him? I don't talk like him. I'm not him. I don't know who this is for, but I want someone to know that you don't have to act like anyone. <laughs> Rather in ministry or anywhere else or on your job or in your family. You don't have to act like no one. God has uniquely made you by your, unique by yourself. So you don't have to do that. So here comes the mother. She said, I know how to let's put a, a, a fur on you and you just disguise your voice. So she thought that she was helping God out. See, this is what happened when we help people out, God out. Because when, when we try to help God, God out, uh, uh, there's going to be regret. There's going to be a lot of regret. And so we are, we're seeing here how he, he obeyed his mom, of course. He obeyed his mom. Uh, and, of course, the, the, the story went on to say, and, 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 he's, and he's saying, Oh, you made this too already? Esau, and of course, Jacob is acting like his twin brother, his older brother. Yes, dad, I made the stew. You don't sound like Esau. Come, come closer. Come closer. Let me smell you. You don't, it, it, so, so, so when somebody's trying to orchestrate, uh, 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 uh pretend, uh, uh, to be pretentious about, uh, 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 towards somebody else. Uh, you got to see if, if, if that, if, if that person had that same anointing, <laughs> had that same, uh, like it, had that same smell. He says, well, I, I, you feel like Esau, even though you don't sound like Esau, but I'm going to give you the blessing anyway. And so it says that, uh, Isaac got the blessing. And we must understand that even though one day um, uh, Esau came home from, from uh, hunting and he was hungry. Mm -hmm. and, as, and he says, and of course, Jacob finished making some lentil soup. And Esau said, give me some of that soup. I am famished. And Jacob said, give me a birthright. He said, what, Esau said, what good is my birthright? I'm hungry. So when you're hungry, you don't think right. <laughs> when, when, when somebody is angry, you don't think right. When somebody's not in their right, their rightful mindset, you don't think right. You don't do right. And because Esau gave his birthright before Isaac even became in a, in a condition that he's in. We're seeing here that Jacob uh, tricked his older brother again. <laughs> um, we must be very careful the word that comes out of our mouths because every word <laughs> um, has a true meaning to what's going on. No matter if you're hungry, you're tired, you're, you're frustrated, you're, 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 you're mad. Be very careful, saints, of what we say and what we do. Because God wants us to, to, to start having control over our temper, control over our mindset, control over our decision making. Because our decision is going to make or break us. And we don't want neither of those things to happen. So because Esau already verbally gave his birthright, listen, saints, listen, listen to us. He verbally agreed to give him, to give his twin brother his birthright. And of course, God already proclaimed that uh, while they were in the mother's, uh, Rebecca's womb. That's, that's two. Number three, now Jacob executed both with his father he tricked his father <laughs> and when he tricked his father his father gave him the blessing pronounced the blessing to him and that's it's in genesis chapter 27 verses 27 through 29 the blessing has been done and now jacob uh feeling some type of way because first of all he tricked his dad 
He lied to his dad. And I only could imagine with my sanctifying imagination to think, I know he regret doing that. How, how many of us regret lying to our spouses, regret lying to our children, regret lying to our pastors, regret lying to our congregation, regret lying to whomever? How many of us regret this year of tricking, uh, uh, plotting, <laughs> uh, conniving, deceiving, lying? So Esau comes home now and prepared the feast for his father. Don't even know what just happened. And when Esau presented the stew to his dad, he said, who are you? I'm your son, Esau. <laughs> My God. I'm your son, Esau. Uh, but I've already given you the blessing to, to, your, to your, 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 your brother. Do you not have another blessing for me, father? No, my son, I do not. I do not have another blessing for you. What am I supposed to do? And now Esau got, was wroth with anger, with hatred in his heart towards his brother Jacob. What do you do when you are just obeying somebody and at the end, you regret obeying that person. And when you finish regretting obeying that person, you, you executed uh, their command, even though your spirit man said, no, what do you do? Ah! When you don't even know how to uh, face the person you've just betrayed. God's timing is always perfect. But Rebecca thought that she was going to go ahead of God. So now, <laughs> I believe that um, she started regretting. He started regretting deeply. And now he had to go to Laban because she said that, I do not want you to marry anyone here, Canaanite girls here. I need you to go back to my country and go and marry someone over there. So I'm sure as he was running, I call it fugitive. And now Jacob became a fugitive because he's running for his life because he's done two things that was contrary for him to feel sound and sure. <laughs> and that was he lied and he deceived. Mm. Jacob was going uh, uh, to, to his mother's uh, uh, hometown. And, but guess what? I'm sure he, as he was getting there to uh, what happened, he uh, uh, found himself in a place of being regretful. He regret what he done. He regretted. Have you regretted this year? What happened to you? Have you regret <laughs> what was being said about you and how you react towards it? Regret. The regret sometimes is taunting. It's listen, that spirit of regret will 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 make you not sleep at night, saints, if you really are a conscience person. So now let's keep reading. Let's let's keep going with the story. So now Jacob escaped from Esau, chapters 27. Uh, verses 41 through 46. She said, do not marry a Canaanite woman here as your brother was doing. Now it, it, uh, um, Esau started marrying Canaanite women all over the place and, and they just could not handle the burden of another child marrying another Canaanite woman because they were off the chain. Yeah, off the chain. So now here he is in a place where uh, verse chapter 28, it says, then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, you shall not take a wife from the daughter of Canaanites. And so she, so she said, arise and go to a, a pan of a, 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 a ram. And that's where, of course, he went. When he went there, he found himself in a place where um, he basically had told, asked God, he, he made a vow to God, and he says, now when Jacob, this is verse 10, now when Jacob went out from uh, Beersheba and 
went towards a uh, harem. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in the place to sleep. So, of course, he's seeing a, a, now he, the Lord has stepped in his dream to let us understand that he is now uh, seeing a ladder. That's why we call it Jacob's ladder. Jacob became running. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, when he went there, um, he had uh, to understand that God is now introducing himself to him um, in a place where he is now understanding that, okay, maybe this is part of God's will. Saints, God's will is not always pretty. <laughs> Let me make this clear. God's, God's will is not always pretty, but it's still God's will. So now they went, he went, and then, of course, when he went and when, when he found everything else, um, oh, oh, also your descendants, God is now talking to him. Introducing himself in verse 13 says, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, and the land on which you lie, I will give, you, give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south and in you and in your seed, all the fa families of the earth shall be blessed. What? My God. I don't know if God has spoken to you in your dream to let you understand where you're going. What the dream said does not match your present. <laughs> uh, because where he is right now in his life, it doesn't look nothing. Jacob was not married yet. Jacob was uh, did not have children yet. Jacob didn't have nothing to his name, but God introduced Himself. You see, what he said, "He said, I am." Verse thirteen, "I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father." That's an introduction. <laughs> I don't know if God has not has, has 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 introduced Himself to you, but we pray right now, Holy Spirit, to reveal to introduce yourself to your people. No matter what state they're in in their lives, no matter how much they regret Holy Spirit, we pray that you shall intercede and in, uh, get yourself uh, uh, be in part of the move of God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing that for them and for us. In Jesus' name. We must know that uh, 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 Jacob was not... Uh, he was feeling low. You can tell he was feeling low because God had to introduce himself and say, uh, I'm going to bless you. <laughs> I'm going to bless your descendants. God will always come, saints. Let me tell you, this. God will always come in your lowest state. <laughs> he's not going to come. He's not going to reveal himself uh, 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 when, when, when we're in our high mountains. Uh, 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 no, we're not, no, I have not yet to see that. God will always come when we are in uh, a regretful, a, a betrayal, a, a low state in our lives. But guess what? This promise that God personally told Jacob, it didn't come to fruition until 20 years later. Oh my God, I'm helping some Holy Ghost. We're helping somebody today. I know we are because we must understand him because God promised something to us. That does not mean it's going to come a, 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 like a microwave. Poof, it's here. No, it's going to take time because the time is going to produce character. It's going gonna, it's gonna to produce a trust in God every step of the day. You know how I many things that God has promised me personally? I have yet to see yet, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen because God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man he needs to repent. You can regret all you want to, but it's part of the, pro it's part of the process. It's part of the process, saints. And when we understand that, <laughs> uh, um, uh, um, we will not have this uh, the spirit of condemnation. Or, this, or 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 the, the murmuring spirit or or the worrying spirit. Jacob wants us to know today. 
He, God, revealed himself when he was a fugitive, when he was running away from his brother, running away from, from, from fear, running away from uh, regret, running away from the lies and deceits. But God's hand, I told you this already, was still on him. Even though he regret. <laughs> Even though he's living with the regret. Even though he's running with the regret. <laughs> with the fear of Esau killing him. Because of course, Esau is a hunter. So it's easy for Esau to kill a person, let alone an animal. What do you do when your enemy, <laughs> you think your enemy got you by the throat? And the next thing you know, God says, I'm right here, buddy. <laughs> I'm right here, a, a, a daughter. I'm right here, my son. Keep going. Keep running. Keep praising. <laughs> and keep living for me. Because my word shall come to pass. Jacob want to tell us today, don't give up in the middle of the crucible. And so, verse 16, and Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. <laughs> Sometimes uh, because regret will blind us at times. Sometimes disappointment shall blind us. Sometimes uh, frustration shall blind us. Sometimes worry shall blind us to not to see. And that's why God has to intervene and move away the blindness, move away the frustration, move away everything for you to see your future is brighter than your, than your present. <laughs> your future is brighter than your present. So the, verse 18, so then Jacob arose early in the morning and took a stone and that he had put at the head and set in the pillar and poured oil on it. And of course, he named that place Bethel, which means the house of God. He's in a place where it doesn't look like it's going to come to pass. <laughs> but he still honored the God of his father, grandfather. So we're seeing here now, he got to the place where he will... Um, he met Rachel, finally got to, uh, 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 to, to Harem, and um, he, he met Rachel and he fell in love, like his dad, he fell in love with Re Re Rebecca. He found Rachel, and boy, he fell in love, and he saw his uncle and introduced himself to his uncle. I am your sister's uh, son, Laban. So Laban said, oh, great, great, great. And so Laban had um, a cattle business, if you want to call it that. And as he was there, what happened? He, uh, 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 Jacob says, I tell you what, uncle, I, I will work seven years for Rachel. <laughs> I will work seven years for Rachel. Laban said, sure, no problem. Okay. And so, so here, his seven years came, and he, he thought he was going to have the love of his life, the one that he first saw and he fell in love with. And lo and behold, the Bible says that uh, when he was, my, 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 when they were in their honeymoon, consummated the marriage. That's when it was official, when it was consummated. Uh, he... <clears throat> What happened? He automatically was in a place where he was tricked. <laughs> Jacob was tricked, saints. So please do not tell me whatever you, you, you sow, you won't reap it. Before Paul came and told us that, <laughs> we're seeing it so clear in the word of God in the book of Genesis. He was tricked. The trickster became tricked. And the next day he says, what did you just do? I asked for, I, I didn't ask for Leah. I asked for Rachel. Layman said, hey, you must understand something, dude. I, I, we don't do that here in this house. 
We're not going to let the old, the younger one marry and the older one stay single. Now, if you want Rachel, you're going to have to give me another seven years. He says, fine, we'll do another seven years without any labor. I mean, without any cost in my labor. So, of course, seven years passed by. And now Jacob is married to the love of his life. Yes. And so we're seeing here that um, he thought life was good. So Leah had four children in the beginning. Then, of course, Leah now gave uh, uh, Jacob to her, her maid servant. She had two children. Unfortunately, the one that he loved... <laughs> Lord have mercy. The one that he really loved could not have children. Hmm. What do you do when you love something but you don't see any fruit? <laughs> what do you do when 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 what, what you despise is is doing is is doing the work but but your your heart is not in it? Oh boy, your heart, your heart, your your energy, your soul is not in it. What do you do, saints? What can you do? With things like this. And the Bible says. Ah. And so. Back and forth. This was a crazy. Marriage affair. All by itself. One wife is too much. <laughs> but you have two wives. And two, and two housemaids. Mm, too much. I don't know how he did it. But God bless him. Ah. Verse. Uh, uh, chapter 30 verse 22 says. And of God. Remembered Rachel. God remembered Rachel and God listened to her and opened her womb. This is letting us know that she kept on asking. She kept on praying. She kept on serving. Even though she despised her sister. <laughs> even though she did not like the situation. But she still kept talking to God. May I suggest to you today, continue on talking to God. Even though it don't look right, it don't feel right, you're angry, keep talking to God. <laughs> God Almighty. You keep speaking, you keep keep talking to him because he's listening. Let, let me Genesis chapter 30, verse 22. Let me read it again for you. Then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her. And opened her womb. She pleaded with God. Until the Lord said okay. I need you to know that God is not dull of hearing. But he just want to hear our voice. Every time we get a chance. She had the boy. The first one of course was named Joseph. <clears throat> Excuse me. She conceived in uh, verse 23 says, and she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. <laughs> hey. And so she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord had added to me a son. Joseph means to add. So she was blessed with just that one son. Now, Jacob, uh, up until right now, now Jacob has 11 children. 11 children. Leah had six. Her, 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 her maid had two. Uh, um, uh, 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 Rachel's maid had two. And she just had one. So, she has a, so now Jacob has 11 children. Just as God has said. Your descendants is going to be well, enormous. So now we're seeing here that. Now Jacob wants to go. Leave the town. God had allowed him to flourish there and now it's time for him to move on. <laughs> but Laban saw that it's because of Jacob, saints, saints, it's because of Jacob that Laban became rich. <laughs> Please understand this, saints. We must know how, how serious it is. Your presence can mean a lot to somebody. 
and they don't want to let you go uh so 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 they're gonna have to do something to keep you but when it is time for you to leave it's time for you to leave when you outgrown the tree house <laughs> hey uh when you outgrown the tree house saints you got to move on and so layman uh, uh laban uh he he just said uh no it's because of you that um i'm getting all this wealth and of course me serving other gods is telling me that um i need to keep you here so he, they made a pact so they, he said okay so this time i'm gonna work for my wages i, I need you to pay me and you're gonna pay me by sh with sheep and goats and so whatever, uh, uh, if, if, if a sheep or a goat is black and spotted, they're going to be mine. Jacob had knew how to uh, do farming very well. Jacob's uh, hand was blessed. God blessed Jacob's hand. And so Jacob started doing a... a, a, a <clears throat> what was what was necessary and that was that he made uh, uh so he 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 gained more sheep and sheep and uh, goats because they were all black and spotted and layman did not receive a lot because he just wanted just the white pure ones but they were they were white and weak <laughs> white and weak <laughs> and so now it is time he saw that <clears throat> He saw that it is Jacob saw that it was time for him to now leave because I he cannot deal with it anymore. He cannot deal with it. So therefore, secretly Jacob left with all his family, all eleven children, all of his two wives and his two concubines, and 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 all of his herds. They left and left without even asking Laman permission because he knew it was going to be a no again. May I suggest to somebody who's listening to me right now, whoever's ministry that you're under, and God told you that you, you, you're done, and you're still lingering, <laughs> it's time for you to move. It's time for you to get out of that because um, God is ready to bring you to a different place, a different platform. I don't know who that is for. Uh, you, are in, you are on a job that God says now it's time for you to open up your own ministry, open up your own business. <laughs> and you're still on that job. But God says, it's time to go. It's time to go. And so we need to understand when God's timing is saying something, it is something very, very serious. So he left without the blessing of his father-in-law. Or his uncle. Not everybody's blessing is going to be for you. <laughs> I don't know why, why we're talking about this. So, uh, 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 we must understand that not everybody's going to be uh, going to be happy to give you a blessing when it's time for you to move on. <laughs> Woo! What is this? So you must understand that when it is time to hear God's voice instead of man's voice, it's time for you to move. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to venture out. And the person that is un that, that, that you're under is not going to give you their blessings. And so why? Because they see the asset in you. They see that it's because of you that they are who they are. Why are we talking about it? So God is telling somebody who's listening to me right now, uh, that you must leave. <laughs> You've done what you can for that particular ministry, that particular job. It's time for you to venture out. Jacob said, I'm, I had it. I've done all that I'm supposed to do. Enough is enough. Let's roll. And as they were leaving, Laman saw that Jacob was no longer in the house with Leah, Rebecca, as well as the 11 children, the herds. So Laman got on his horse and he tried to run it. And he caught up with Jacob. 
He caught up with Jacob and he, and he says, where is my, uh, 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 one of my gods, my statues? And Jacob said, Jacob said, I don't, I don't have your, your gods. I don't, I don't need your gods. I, I, I don't need your fakeness. I have the true living God. Hallelujah. And so, but Jacob did not know that Rebecca, I'm sorry, that Rachel took it and she sat on it. And of course, when he came in, when her, her father came in uh, inside the camp, she said, oh, I have my, 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 my monthly. And then he left, but really she did not have it. She was sitting on this crazy idol. How are you going to sit on an idol? That's your God. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not touching that today. <laughs> today is not the day for that. So they made they, they had words, but at the end the Bible said that they made a pact. They made a pact. And they said, okay, um, we're gonna just do what we gotta do. Um, and at the end, we're gonna just let it be what it's gonna be. We're gonna have a heap of witnesses. We are in, in chapter 31. And uh uh verse 48 and 49 says, and layman said. This heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore, its name called is Galid. For the nine said also Misfa, because he said, may God watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. Now, let me just say this very clearly. I know that some people <clears throat> orchestrate that as a benediction. That's a person don't, don't know the word. That misfa uh, um, uh, oath was saying goodbye. The Bible never said that they, they met again. They never met again, according to scripture. And so when I hear people say, may the Lord watch between you and thee. Uh, and when we, uh, while we're absent from one another. So you're saying goodbye forever? <laughs> That's not a benediction. The benediction is what I, I, I usually do. <clears throat> I do uh, when we finish broadcasting. The benediction is now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before. You understand? That's a benediction. So now they, 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 they left without a problem and now he Jacob is now hearing <clears throat> that Jacob heard that Esau is on his heel with 400 men. Hmm. So now here comes fear talking in his ear again. Regret talking back in his ear again. <laughs> uh, 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 re remorseful is talking back to his ear again. Condemnation is talking to his ear again. And now uh, uh, all those things are now, has now gripped Jacob. So Jacob divided uh, the clans into two parts. Uh, this is where now the fork meets the road. This is where now mm, uh, regret has now is about to be reversed. <laughs> Reverse. God is about to reverse regret, reverse trauma, reverse sickness, reverse, reverse everything, reverse pain, reverse suffering, reverse cursing. We see in thirty chapter thirty two is what I call God is about to reverse <laughs> the situation. We're seeing here in chapter uh, 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 thir uh, 32, uh, starting in verse 22, what does it say? And when he arose that night, uh, he took two wives, his two f uh, female uh, servants, uh, and his 11 sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. And he took them and set them over the brook and set over what he had. Verse 24 says, and when Jacob was alone, left alone, you got to be left alone. What's, why, why? And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. This is, this is the highlight of Jacob's life right here. 
chapter 32 is the highlight of knowing who God really is. The Bible says that he was left alone. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Um, left alone. Have you ever noticed people who, who have to have a light on when they go to sleep or have to have music on when they go to sleep or have to have some kind of uh, uh, seance going on? While, it, because somewhere, there's somewhere that you're being tormented, saints. <laughs> uh, you have to have the light on. You have to have the TV on. You have to have this on. No, no such thing. So God is saying to us that he wants us to be alone. Why? This is why now uh, um, uh, fasting is, 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 is necessary. Uh, uh, consecration is necessary because he wants to now introduce himself <laughs> in another level. <laughs> in another level. He wants to introduce himself in another level. Chapter 32 is where. God, divinity meets up with humanity. Hey, oh my God. Divinity is, is now about to break forth into humanity. He wrestled. This man wrestled with Jacob until daybreak. What was he wrestling about? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, 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 this man wrestled. He, he was not wrestling with, with Jacob as a, as, uh, um, as a person. He was wrestling with Jacob's psyche. He was wrestling with, with Jacob's emotional state. He was uh, wrestling with, with Jacob uh, to, to, to peel off the regret, to peel off the, the, the deception, peel off the, the spirit of lies. He was peeling off taking away <laughs> what was not supposed to be there because the next level where God is about to bring Jacob, he could not bring him with all of that garbage baggage in him. God wants us to be alone. <laughs> I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the rose, men, and the voice I hear Calling on my ear, the sound of God rejoicing, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am His own, and the joy we share. As we tarry there, none other has ever known. So we're seeing here, he had to be alone. <laughs> so for God, <laughs> this man to come and rescue him from himself. <laughs> uh, uh, rescue him. Take away the, the, the fear. Take away the pain. Take away the trauma. Take away the regret. He wrestled with this man. Verse 30, 26 is making us understand what Jacob was going through. And he said, let me go for it is daybreak. But he said, I will not let you go. Until you bless me. I need you to bless me. For me to feel free. For me, for me to be whole. For me to be forgiven. <laughs> and for me to be uh, favored. By God again. I can't let you go. You came to me. <laughs> Woo! I, I can't let go. Because you came. In my territory. In my world. In my life. In my psyche, in my thoughts, in my mind, in my heart. And if you came, you came for a mission. You came for a purpose. You came for, for a reason. Therefore, I'm, I'm asking you to grant me this blessing that I've been carrying for 20 years. Carrying for a whole year. Carrying for five years. I need you. To lift this burden off of me. Because I cannot continue on living this way again another day. Since you came to me. I need you to do this 
for me. Mm, my Lord. So verse 28 says, and Jacob said, the, the, the angel said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled, struggled with God and with man and have prevailed. So the angel or this man, which we know of course is Jesus Christ. Uh, this man is telling Jacob, you've been running away from the calling. <laughs> running away from this assignment. Running away from my presence. Running away from, from what God had called you to be. And now you are now running away, and not only from me, but you're running away from man, from your brothers, from your sisters, for those who I ordained for you to, or to, to minister to. You run away from two things here. And God says, no more. <laughs> Stop running. Stop being a fugitive. Stop running and get where you need to be. Hmm. Stop running. Stop running from your assignment. Stop running away from God. Stop running away from the visions. Stop running away from, 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 from the purpose. Because God is calling you. He's not calling you because he has no one else. He's calling you because it's in your book. So, this is where now, verse 29, what does it say? It says, and then Jacob asked and saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why do you ask me for my name? And the man blessed Jacob there. <laughs> when, when, when this man changed his name from Jacob to Israel, that was when the regret was reversed. <laughs> reversed to what? Reversed to recovery. The pain has been reversed. The curse has been reversed. The condemnation has been reversed. It's been reversed. We have a little Jacob in all of us, don't we? But at the end, we shall be in Israel because it's going to be reversed. And so he was so amazed of what had happened. Imagine you praying all night long and God finally came and reversed that curse for you. Yes, yeah, worth it. Uh, you worship the Lord all night long, and you think God is gonna be gonna ignore that? No, because you stayed alone, and you made sure that God heard your prayer. So then, we're seeing here that only the strong, uh, 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 God has now reversed, restored Jacob, and after he had finished being restored, <laughs> this is when. He was ready to encounter Esau, his twin brother. He saw Esau from afar. And the Bible says that, uh, 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 that Jacob, uh, uh, again, separated to live for the, uh, uh, Leah and his children went, her children went first. And then, of course, Benadad and as well as uh, and Rachel went last. And as every step, for every seven steps, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, they bowed down to Esau. And when Esau saw him, the Bible said that he was, he ran. Jacob thought that he was running to, to spin because, of course, he still had his 400 people. But Jacob was not fearful anymore. <laughs> Jacob did not regret because he was now forgiven. <laughs> wow, he's been forgiven. And when he was forgiven, he was ready to face what was fearing him. Ran. And instead of them thinking that they were going to collide, they hugged. They hugged and kissed one another. They forgot the mess. Esau said, I heard you were coming back home and I wanted to greet you. I received your gifts that you had sent before me. 
but I just wanted to see you. There's restoration in the families today. There's restoration in the marriage today. <laughs> There's restoration in ministry today. There's restoration in your health and healing today. There's restoration. And all the regrets that you've been through, God is going to reverse the regret for you to receive restoration, your reward. <laughs> you being restored back, yeah. Joel says it best. He says, uh, 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 um, he prophesied how the Holy Spirit had inspired him to say that God is going to, my God, restore the years <laughs> that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust has eaten up. Somebody needs to know that what you are regretting uh, you regret that you didn't say, I love you to your mom. I regret that you didn't say, uh, uh, I miss you, dad. You, 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 you regret that, that, that you weren't there. Uh, 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 the last word you said to your spouse before uh, uh, he got into an accident. Listen, we rebuke regret. Shake it off. In the name of Jesus Christ, God says, now it's time for me to restore you. Renew you. Uh, back. To myself and so I pray <clears throat> that of course after that Jacob went and he saw his father <clears throat> and Esau Esau and uh, and and Jacob buried Isaac for the beauty about <clears throat> about Jacob was or is is that he's the only one out of the three um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob out of, out of the three patriarchs. He's the one who started the children of Israel. <laughs> Just what God told him when he first started running away. So make sure that whatever God promised you, he's going to make it good. It may not come on you. Our timing and I, I understand that more than anybody else. But remember one thing and one thing only, saints. That God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he needs to repent. We pray that the Lord restore, renew, revive, replenish. In the name of Jesus Christ, we dismantle every regret. No more regrets. We dismantle every kind of ill uh, uh, spirit that's contrary to the will and the promises of God over your life. Because he's going to fulfill it in Jesus' name. And so, God, we thank you today. We bless you for your word today that, Lord God, you've taken away the regret. We release the regret, the condemnation, the fear, the pain, the deceit the lies. Now we clothe ourselves with recovery. We clothe ourselves with revival, with joy and laughter one more time. We thank you and we bless you. We honor you and we praise you. It's in your name that we pray. Your name is Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Whew, and amen. We pray that something that was said today that blessed your hearts and we pray that you shall uh, um, bless this ministry. We have churches in Africa and in Haiti that we are taking care of. And we desire for us to do more with your loving gifts. So therefore, we pray that you always share this with somebody who's going through. Because you don't know what people are going through. But we pray that the Lord will bless you indeed. And we pray that the Lord shall open your eyes. And for him to introduce himself to you more and more each day. Until next time. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord's face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance before thee and grant thee peace in your heart, in your mind, in, on, in your thoughts, on your job, in your marriage, in your ministry, in your family. Until the Lord calls us home, I say shalom to you. 
in your 